Today I want to make a brief follow-up to my video that I posted yesterday about battery swap. I have been told that there are still a few misunderstandings about how battery swap actually works. And I also want to further follow up on some of the comments that I've seen here on Warren's video and elsewhere on the internet. The first thing that is apparently still unclear is what actually happens if a Neo battery swap station is down for maintenance or closed? That if there is a battery swap location that is closed, you're not gonna be able to book a battery swap in your app or in your vehicle. That location will be grayed out and you will not be able to book a swap. There is gonna be almost no possibility whatsoever that you are gonna book a battery swap at a station that is closed. The only way that I can see this happening is if the station is open when you book the swap, and then it becomes damaged in between the time that you are that you book the swap and you drive to the station. And in that case, uh, I would assume that Neo will automatically cancel the swap while you're driving to the location. They will notify you via the app or in your car, and you still will not have that situation where you arrive at a battery swap location and it's down for maintenance. But I can't say for sure because that's never happened to me. Still, if you do go to a power swap location, you've booked a battery swap and you find out that that location is now down for maintenance, uh, what can you do? Most likely what you're gonna do is simply charge your car at a local supercharger. The vast majority of battery swap stations in China, they have superchargers, test the chargers, all kinds of EV infrastructure right next to the battery swap station. I tried to investigate if this is the case in Norway as well. So first, here's a picture from Bjorn's video, the power swap station in the background, as well as DC fast chargers in the background. So if the Swap station is down, you simply charge your car. There's only two battery swap stations in Norway, so then I looked at the other one. I found a video here from the grand opening of the original power swap station. And in this, in this video, you can see not only is there a Neo battery swap station, but there's also Neo superchargers in the background right next to the station. So you simply, once again, charge your car. If for some reason you absolutely do not want to charge your car, you only insist on battery swapping. Uh, well, in Norway, it's gonna be tough because there's only two stations. But in China, if you're in a big city like, say, Shenzhen, where I live, what you're going to find is there's an abundance of battery swap stations. There's going to be one nearby. You can make the drive two or three kilometers in pretty much any direction, and you're going to find out there's another battery swap station. So it's not going to be a huge deal. Next, let's take a look at the issue of complexity of a battery swap. I realized yesterday's video might not have been 100% clear about how the battery swap process actually takes place and how complicated it is. Please note that this only applies to China. It does not apply to Norway because I've never driven a Neo or swapped my battery in Norway. When you want to arrange a battery swap, you simply set your navigation to a battery swap station, whether that's in your mobile app or in the car itself. Just like Tesla, when you want to navigate to a supercharger, you put in the navigation, off you go. Same exact thing. So we're equally as complex currently. Next, you drive to the battery swap station. When you're within a certain range, I don't know what the exact range is, it seems to be around like 500 meters away from the battery swap station, you're automatically placed into a queue. It's a digital queue. Uh, and FYI, if there's any Americans watching, a queue is a line. Remember, it's not a physical queue, it's a digital queue. If you're first in line, there's nobody else swapping their car when you pull up, your car will tell you it is now your turn for a battery swap. You simply drive into the battery swap station. In front of it, there's a white rectangle on the ground. Once you get there, it tells you, uh, do you want to initiate the battery swap? On your touchscreen, you just press yes or confirm. It's very simple, you don't have to shift, park, drive, reverse, anything like that. Your car then automatically takes control. It backs you into the battery swap station. Once you're in the swapping bay, it then asks you to put your car in park and it, another pop-up comes up on the screen and it says, are you ready to confirm your power swap? You press confirm and that's all you do. Then you sit there and wait. If you would like to sit in your car and wait, it takes about five minutes from when it starts to when it finishes. Once it's finished, you simply put the car back into drive and you drive away. So if we're talking about how complex it is, it's literally three taps on the touchscreen at various points. This includes from when you initially set off on your drive from wherever your starting point is until the battery swaps complete, plus two button pushes on the shifter. You put it in park, and then when you leave, you put it in drive. You can argue that that's five inputs from the user. I don't think any of them are particularly complicated. If you're able to use your touchscreen in your Tesla or any other car to change the radio station, or to uh, adjust the air conditioner. Those are probably more complicated than just tapping a button that automatically pops up on your screen. Um, and if you're able to shift in your car with a shifter, um, so basically if you can operate a motor vehicle, 
you can very easily complete a power swap with NEO. It's very, very simple. So next, let's take a look at what happens if there is a, a line at the battery swap station. So let's say you put in your destination to the battery swap station, you drive up, you're within range, and it says uh, there's a line ahead of you. Let's say there's three cars ahead of you. Your NEO will tell you you are third in line or fourth in line, I guess, if there's three cars ahead of you, and it'll tell you the wait time is approximately 15 minutes. So remember, it's a digital queue, not a physical queue. So if you want to stop and use the restroom or stretch your legs or do anything that you would do with a supercharger, you simply park your car and then you go and take care of whatever business you want to take care of. If it tells you it's 15 minute wait, good, you can go order some food, use the restroom, stretch your legs, walk back to your car, and now it's your turn. And just to be clear, how do you know it's your turn? Well, Neo will notify you through your mobile app or through a phone call when it's your turn. Now, in my opinion, this queuing system is ideal for a number of reasons. I made a video talking about it before, how I think it's kind of like the secret best feature about battery swap is that you have a, a line. Now, the most important reason for this is it eliminates the possibility of people jumping their place in line. You cannot initiate a battery swap if it's not your turn. Because of this, there's gonna be almost no possibility of like road rage incidents or people fighting over a charger or saying, I was here first, why are you charging before me? Like you would at a conventional supercharger if it's a crowded supercharger. I also mentioned in yesterday's video that I have personally witnessed already uh, in Tesla in America, superchargers that are full and cars coming from that side and cars coming from that side. And thankfully in that experience, there was only one car on that side and then one car on this side, so it wasn't very complicated, but you can imagine if there was two or three cars in each direction, how do you determine whose turn it is to go next? You have to keep track, keep your eye on other people. You're gonna be sitting in your car. You can't leave your car while you're waiting in line. It's not digital, it's all physical. And another thing it's gonna do is gonna block either the parking lot, because everybody's waiting in line, or potentially even block traffic in a road. There's a lot of really, really negative effects that could happen at a really busy supercharger that pretty much can't happen at a battery swap station. Moving right along, there's another issue that I've seen commented is people say, what if I get to the battery swap station and there's not a fully charged battery ready for me? Well, a uh, level two battery swap station has 13 batteries in it. Let's say it's a fully optimized, fully utilized battery swap station. They're swapping batteries constantly, 12 or 13 cars per hour. So let's say you return your battery. It has 10% charge. Now they're gonna cycle through 13 batteries by the time they utilize that first battery again. At that point, it's gonna be an hour later. Most likely that battery is gonna be fully charged to 90% or 93%, which is what NEO keeps their batteries at in China. There is, I guess, theoretically a possibility that that battery hasn't charged fully. Uh, maybe it's only at 85%, maybe it's only at 80%. Even then, it's only gonna take you six minutes to go from whatever your state of charge is to 80% in five or six minutes, which is still faster than Tesla or any other supercharging EV that I know of currently. Somebody also commented that Tesla installs batteries at their superchargers. Now, I personally don't know enough about it. I don't know how many batteries or kilowatt hours of battery packs are at each supercharger location. I don't know, you know how that affects their ability to produce batteries for their vehicles, but it is another thing to consider is Tesla also produces more batteries than cars, according to what people commented and what I found on the internet. Again, I don't know enough about this to make a really educated comment on it, but for people that are saying you shouldn't produce more batteries than cars, well, apparently it happens for Tesla too. Next, it seems like there's a lot of people that are worried they're gonna swap their battery in their Neo, and they're gonna be given a battery that's uh, in really poor health. Out of over 50 swaps that I've done in China, I've never had a battery that uh, had a significant difference in range or performance. I never noticed it anyway. Neo claims that they actively monitor the health of every battery. When they come into the station, they run diagnostics. So if a battery is in poor health, it just gets cycled out and recycled. You are never gonna get a battery that is significantly different than any other battery. Now, when it comes to battery degradation, I personally didn't really worry about it as a Neo owner. I know a lot of EV owners do worry about it. A lot of EV owners don't worry about it. But from what I've seen, a damaged Tesla battery can cost you over $10,000, maybe even $20,000 at times. Whereas if you have a battery that uh, with Neo and you wanna swap it out, it's not gonna cost you anything and Neo's gonna just take that battery out of the circulation and recycle it. It's something you don't even ever have to worry about and you never have to worry about a huge expense of replacing your battery or having to replace your whole car due to a poor battery. Next, I've seen tons of comments about, oh, battery swap will never work in a cold climate. Well, China has lots of cold climates. You can look at their power up plan if you really are so inclined. They have swap stations way up north in Heilongjiang next to Siberia. They also 
have battery swap stations in Norway, which is also very cold. Neo claims that there's no issue operating their battery swap stations in cold environments. I have no reason to doubt their claims, but I also am not an expert on this. Um, but it seems that it works so far. So for people saying it would never work in a cold climate, it already does. Next, well, I personally can't speak for women. I am not a woman, but I did see a comment stating that for women, it should be safer to swap their battery in like a well-lit battery swap station. You know, it's covered by closed circuit TVs. Uh, it only takes five minutes. Uh, if it's middle of the night, 3 a.m. and you're in a dark abandoned parking lot, basically you're only person out there supercharging your car. It could be very dangerous to be a woman in that situation. I really don't feel comfortable commenting on that, but I can see that point. And then finally, there's a ton of comments about how this can never scale. And I challenge those people to just look at how it's already scaled. There's already 1,100 power swap stations in China. They just announced they've done 12 million total battery swaps. I don't know how much more you can, you can get in terms of scalability. You know, they're scaling, it's already happening, it's already been done. I don't know why people would say that it can't scale when it clearly already has. Now, I do personally think that there might be some issues in countries like the United States of America um, in terms of keeping them online because people will vandalize them. There's people that are going to steal, you know, try to get copper or rare earth elements, I guess, from these things if they're not manned 24 seven. Um, there are issues I could see happening. From my perspective, it already has scaled. People that think it can't scale are just unable to see the bigger picture, I think. So that's it. I hope that clears up a lot of the misconceptions about battery swapping. If you still don't understand how it works, I urge you to go back and look at my battery swapping videos. Maybe the one about timing version two battery swap. It shows you how you get automatically placed in the queue. It shows you how long it took. Um, it shows you there's lots of EV chargers all around that place in case it doesn't work. Um, it shows you a lot of those things. So feel free to go check that out. And if you have any more questions, again, comment. Um, I'll be watching those. And if I need to make another follow-up, I'll do it. But um, if anything's unclear, just let me know.